whatever it is that you believe is holding you back. I promise you that the answer is specialized knowledge. What's holding you back is your limiting beliefs. Once you've identified them, it's so easy to destroy them. So you've got to crush those limiting beliefs that you think are holding you back. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom, using multiple streams of income in real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Andrea Ingstrom, a real estate investor and business coach and co-founder of the Partnership for Realtors. And as always, I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the best-selling book, without fear of her future. Over the past two years, Teresa has had nearly 200,000 join her masterclass where she teaches women how to become successful real estate investors. If you're not already subscribed to the Without Fear of Her Future podcast, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with current episodes dropping every Friday. Hey, Teresa. Hey. <laughs> well, super excited today. I have truly one of my favorite people as a guest today mm -hmm. uh, talking about so one of the biggest myths surrounding real estate is that you have to have piles of money to get started as a real estate investor and it's just not true so we have my son kelton mm -hmm. todd uh, a real estate expert investor and coach for the Women's Real Estate Investors Network, here to talk about five different ways to use other people's money to get started investing. So, Kelton, welcome. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Well, yes. this is my youngest son, and he is, along with his two brothers, the reason that I am here today. They talked me uh, out of into leaving a 25 year career and becoming a real estate investor and everything I know they have taught me. So, um, but I want you to hear from Kelton. I want you to tell us Kelton about your experience as a real estate investor and how you got started in the business. Yeah, there's a long story, uh, but I'll try to make uh, just a short story out of it. Basically I, um, was working a nine to five. I had gone to college and gotten all my student loan debts and went and got a job and was, you know, on Sid's 30 year plan to get them paid off and build up a retirement account and uh, live the American dream. And there was a, a girl that I had been chasing since I was in high school that uh, was going to uh, study abroad. And I just decided that I wasn't going to miss out on that opportunity. Uh, to chase chase after my dreams and chase after her. And so I started doing some research and figured out what in the heck can I do to get out of the nine to five rat race, corporate America. Um, and much to my mom's disappointment, I quit my job and started pursuing real estate investing full time. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that is so true. I was like, what are you doing? You went to college all these years. You have insurance. You had all the things. And I am so glad that he didn't take my advice. So, so glad. So a lot of people are afraid to start investing in real estate because they have they, they do not have big stacks of cash laying around. So what would you say to those people? Yeah, so I can definitely tell you I was one of them, right? Still in student loan debt over my head. Um, you know, went out and bought the new car because I had the new job and went and got the the nice new lease. And and uh, you know, I I was definitely like the typical American living above my means and saving just a little bit every single month. Uh fortunately I was, you know, I was young and I started putting a little bit away my 401, but it was so such a short time period. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I don't think there's probably anybody more well suited to answer that question than myself, because I had absolutely nothing whenever I first got started. Um, and I mean, the, the general answer is to go out there and get some specialized knowledge. And it might sound cliche. It might it might if you're listening and you're like, what is specialized knowledge or or what does that mean? Um, the, the number one like tip nugget that I can tell you is that being a successful real estate investor has absolutely nothing to do with how much money you have in the bank. It has everything to do with how much specialized knowledge you have in the industry. And so I was fortunate in the sense that I, um, 
I burned the bridges, if you will, right? I eliminated any other option and I went all in. And so I obsessed and consumed more specialized knowledge in a shorter time frame than just about anybody I've ever met can possibly consume on one topic. That's the benefit of, of having ADHD is uh, you get all the downsides, but one of the upsides <laughs> is you can obsess over content. And so that's what I did. And uh, there's there's nothing else that I can attribute any of the success that we've had to, uh, of course, first and foremost, you know, to, to God and, and everything that he's blessed us with. But uh, after that, it all comes down to the specialized knowledge that that uh, we've acquired from other people simply sharing like you all do with uh, others, how they got started, how, you know, how to solve all the problems that you feel like are holding you back. I love it. Um, the idea of specialized knowledge is a principle that comes from that book, Think and Grow Rich. And um, and I love that I love that you all call it what it is and and call it yeah. out for us so that those who are looking for how to become that successful can can know, oh, this is where you find it. Um, but today's call is going to be very educational because Kelton, we know that you're a coach, you're an amazing coach, and you're a teacher at heart. And so we're looking for some education today. Let's dig in on what are those five ways, five of the ways, because there's lots of ways, but we're going to talk about five specific ways today. But what are the what are the ways that we can use other people's money to invest in real estate? Yeah. So real quick, I just got to hit on something that you just said. And this, I just do this for people listening, right? Like, w w uh, even whenever you say like, you know, Kelton, you're a coach. And it, whenever I hear that, it's so interesting just to put that into perspective again, just to give some insight about, um, like what qualifies me to be a coach or why I'm a coach. Um, I think this will be helpful for your audience to know that one of the reasons that, that I do believe I make a good coach is again, a limitation, right? I do have uh, ADHD. I do have this uh, obsessive, like I get really obsessed over content and ideas and learning about them and figuring them out. And so the only reason that that I believe that I am a, a good teacher and I'm able to help people understand this is because I'm not sharing any information that is mine, right? I didn't like create this. I didn't invent this. This isn't my specialized knowledge. This is industry-wide specialized knowledge that I just got obsessed with studying and learning. And so everything that, I, that I'll be sharing with you today or at any point in time, if you ever hear me sharing on real estate, it's simply information that I've learned from other people. And then the last thing I wanted to say on that is, you know, I'll, I'll share a story from time to time with people uh, and we don't have time today, but I'll just kind of give you the bullet points of it. And that's, I actually learn that I was a good teacher because I failed all of my classes one semester. And after failing all of those classes, I got kicked out of my university and I eventually <laughs> got let back in on a variance. And the only way that I could graduate was if I passed all of my classes and I ended up making straight A's that next semester and all those classes that I failed all at the same time. And I share that with you because I didn't know I was a teacher. I didn't even know I was a student of success. I didn't even know that I was a student until I had to be, until it like all got put on the line. And all of a sudden I found myself teaching all the other kids and like getting frustrated that they couldn't understand it. The same topic and content that I failed the semester before. So it's not because I'm like smarter than the average person or I'm more intelligent or I'm I'm like this gifted, you know, speaker or teacher. It simply comes from a place of of humble knowing that if you just go out there, the information's out there. And then I just, I'm passionate about real estate investing and sharing with other people this information that, that has completely changed my life and generations and generations and generations, all from just what we call specialized knowledge. I love it. So much of success is just the practicing of proven principles. Uh -huh. And so I love that you teach and you coach on things that are proven principles, but you don't just coach and teach. You've actually done these things. You've put them into practice and have real life experience that you draw from. So tell us, what are those five ways that people can invest with other people's money? Because a lot of people show up to a class about real estate and they're like, I don't have money. That's why I'm here. I want money. So how do we do this? How do we get started? Yeah. So there's, there's multiple different ways. Um, I think, you know, th there's, if I were going to say like, what are the main five, right? I would definitely say wholesaling is one of the, the, the quickest and easiest ways to get started using 100% of other people's money. Uh, the Burr strategy is one of my favorite strategies. I hope we spend a little bit of time talking on tonight, uh, just, or today, just because, um, it is truly a strategy that allows you to build wealth. It allows you to own real estate and tap into all five streams of wealth generation that come from real estate investing 
all while using other people's money throughout the entire process. So that's probably like the, the holy grail of other people's money. Uh, most of the time when people get started investing in real estate, it's using it's wholesaling or it's doing, you know, seller financing or using private money loans. Um, but the reality is, is you can, you know, partner, of course, but the, but the reality is the, the Burr strategy is the one that really allows you to get to buy the real estate, keep the real estate, own the real estate yourself, all while using other people's money along the way. Absolutely. So what strategy would you say is the best first step for new investors who don't have big piles of money yet? What should they do to start? Yeah. So the, the typical answer here would be wholesaling. And I don't mind that answer because um, though I have a little bit different belief that I don't think that we always necessarily should pick the first strategy. Uh, I, I'm a servant by heart. I believe that our job is, is to serve motivated and distressed sellers. And so whatever situation they're in calls for different solutions. Uh, but I, I don't mind conforming to the standard answer of wholesaling because the reality is that is actually the strategy that most people can grasp and gain that confidence that, holy cow, I can do this. And so due to that, I think wholesaling is the absolute best strategy at the very least to start learning about because it's going to start crushing some of those limiting beliefs and help you realize that it's not a big pile of cash, like, like you mentioned earlier, mom, that's really holding people back. It's really just that information and that specialized knowledge. So if you can, if you can jump in and start getting that information around wholesaling, then you will really quickly realize, wait, having a whole pile of cash isn't even going to help me in this strategy. And once you realize that, then it's like, well, what else could I possibly do? And the, and the craziest thing about it is, is the more you make in real estate investing, the less of your own money you use. Like, so not <laughs> yeah. only do you not use money at the beginning, but then it becomes like a game. And then it's like, well, now I'm never going to use any of my own money because <laughs> it's how much I can actually do at any given time. Hey, Keldon, I know that when I first got started, um, obviously I started out with wholesaling and you had taught me everything about that and how wholesaling works. And just because we're talking about this for a minute, kind of talk about what a typical uh, wholesale assignment fee looks like from one wholesale deal and how can someone start as a wholesaler? Yeah, absolutely. So just real quick, for those of you that aren't familiar with wholesaling, I'm assuming if, if you're a, a fan of this podcast and you're following, then you probably have some idea. But if you don't, it's the simplest of concept. Everywhere you go and everywhere you spend money every single day, somebody wholesaled something in order to make that happen, right? That's, that's really how life and business works. Uh, if you think about like Starbucks, when you go get your coffee, there was somebody who actually bought the, the, the coffee bean from somebody in Colombia and then sold it to Starbucks along the way, right? There's somebody who's wholesale that. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with, with Starbucks business model. That one might not be 100% accurate, but, but generally speaking. <laughs> we get it, we get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, generally speaking. So uh, real estate investing is no difference, right? We go and use our, our specialized knowledge to go directly to the homeowners and sellers that are in a motivated and distressed situation. And we put their property under contract and then after we have that property under contract, we simply go and market that contract to sell the rights to that contract to another investor who maybe has a little less time or energy on, on their hands, uh, but is still looking to get a good investment deal. And they go on to purchase that property. And so when we do that, we get paid a fee, right? Uh, we call it uh, internally, we like to call that a specialized knowledge fee, but <laughs> it's basically a wholesale fee where you get compensated for your work, for going out and finding that opportunity and solving that problem. And so uh, we call it the end buyer, the person that you take the contract to and buys the property ultimately from the original seller that you spoke with, your fee is added to that purchase price. And so the industry average ranges from 5,000 to 20,000. Uh, but those numbers are a little bit skewed because of these nationwide companies that just charge a flat 5K. But the reality is the vast majority of us that are actually wholesaling, our average wholesale fee is about $20,000. And so you'll have some that are 10,000 and we've had some that are over $100,000, which is crazy, but the average comes out to about $20,000. 
Yes, I love it. Um, so let's talk about the Burr strategy now. We promised earlier to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, so explain the Burr strategy to our beginners listeners. Yeah, so the Burr strategy is intended, and this is a really cool strategy that hasn't always been around. As a matter of fact, uh, hasn't even always been around since I've been investing, uh, and 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 that's only been about uh, eight to almost nine years now. Um, and so it's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about it is because it solves a problem that existed in the industry for a really long time. Uh, you could always do like the foundational principles of it, but the actual financing wasn't around uh, to allow the everyday average you know, um, person to be able to capitalize on it. So the, the long and short of it is whenever we go out and buy a rental property, we've got to put 15 to 20% down. And a lot of people don't quite always understand that because they think, well, I just bought a house a few years ago and I only had to put 3% down or 5% down. Right. Well, that's because it's your primary residence. And we have government backed uh, uh, loan programs that are designed to help you know, the American dream that are designed to help the average American get into a home that they can live in and be proud of. Once you go to buy an additional home or an investment property is what we call it, meaning it's not your primary residence, the banks are almost always going to require a minimum of 15 to 20 percent down which is why a lot of your audience may have that mindset of yeah. like well i would love to invest in real estate but i can't because i don't have this huge pile of cash laying around right which we hear that all the time that's a super common misconception as a matter of fact it's such a misconception that i'll actually go on a tangent real quick it's actually the opposite mm. so if you don't have a pile of cash laying around, then you need to start investing in real estate even more. Right. right? Like that's that's what's crazy is I've met so many people that worked their whole life, retired, got this nest egg, and then they start investing in real estate. And every single time, the first thing they say is like, why did I wait? Like, this mm -hmm. is crazy. Why did I wait? And and here's an analogy that may resonate with some of some of you know your audience here may not, but Let's just say that you you worked your whole life and you saved up and you had a half a million dollars in your retirement account, okay? Mm -hmm. So you had a half a million dollars in your retirement account. And you said, okay, now I've got this pile of cash. Now I'm going to go become a real estate investor. Well, on average, you can do one home. <laughs> you're going to take that half a million dollars and you're going to go buy a house and you're out of money. Right. That doesn't do you any good. You're not going to have enough passive income from rental properties from one property, right? And say you say you buy two affordable houses. You might have two. That's not going to do you any good. You're going to run out of money like that. Or say you want to go flip a house. You can afford to flip one house at a time. When you start to gain specialized knowledge, you realize you can flip multiple houses at a time using other people's money. And so the reality is, is you actually need it even more if you don't have that pile of cash. But even if you do have that pile of cash, even if it's $5 million, right, that you have saved up, you're going to run out of that money. Mm -hmm. And and to be honest with you, if somebody has $5 million that they wanted to use all in real estate investing right now, they'll make less on that in one given month that I will any given month using none of my own money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so once you understand that concept, you realize, stop waiting, like waiting is the, 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 enemy of success, right? That That is what's going to keep you from going out there and being successful is, is prolonging this or, or, or thinking that you need to wait till you go out there and get a bunch of money. Getting back off that off that uh, tangent that I had to go on down uh, real quick there. Um, so the Burr strategy, the Burr strategy, again, prime example, uh, You the first step in the Burr strategy is to go out and buy a house. And again, how do we buy that house? Well, we use other people's money to buy the house. Right. And so when we buy that property, typically we have to put 15 to 20 percent down if we're going to go buy an investment property. Well, in the Burr strategy, we actually go and borrow all the money to buy the house. Right. So instead of just borrowing 80 percent of the money and putting 20 percent of our own money down, we go and we borrow all the money to buy the house. And we're now purchasing a house with cash. Well, the benefit of purchasing a house with cash is you now get to be the buyer to remember all those wholesalers that we talked about it a minute ago that go and find those cheap properties, those motivated and distressed sellers and get them under contract. They bring those to us and we buy those contracts from them at a discount with the cash that we just borrowed from somebody else. 
So that's the, that's the beautiful part is we're using someone else's money, but we're paying all cash. So we buy these properties at about a 20% discount. And there's an, there's a plethora, there's an unlimited amount of these deals every single month that you can buy. Every single month, I analyze more deals than I can even begin to purchase uh, in any given month because there's always more wholesalers because that's like the first and easiest step. So there's always more wholesalers that have deals than there are in buyers with cash in hand ready to go. And so we kind of get the cream of the crop. We get to pick and choose what are the best properties that I can buy. And we're buying them at, at about a 20% discount. So we use the money that we that we borrowed and we purchased that home for what we call 80 cents on the dollar. So we buy the house at a discount for about 80% of what it's worth. We renovate the home. And now that the home is cleaned up, because most all the all these properties that we're talking about need a little bit of work, uh, which actually is a benefit when you're doing the birth strategy, because now your rental property is going to be all fixed up. But you buy the house, you fix the house up, then you rent that property out. So we rent it out to renters that are going to stay there every single month and pay the rent every single month. And once we've done those steps, now we go back to that same bank that was going to give us an 80% loan, but require us to put 20% down. Well, now we just go to them and refinance the property. Well, when you're refinancing, there's not a minimum down payment because you already own the home. So they will refinance the full 80%, which is what we borrowed from someone else to buy it to begin with. We pay that original lender off and we now own that home with a brand new loan that is a 30 year loan, fixed interest rate, where it cost us less every single month than our tenant is going to pay to live in the house. So now not only do we own the home, we own the asset, we didn't use any of our own money. We borrowed some money from one person, bought it, fixed it up, borrowed money from somebody else to pay that first person back. And we now own the home and didn't have to put any of our own capital in that property. But now we sit back and we enjoy all the benefits of owning real estate, which, you know, everybody knows value of properties go up every single month. So my property is appreciating every single month. The amount I owe on that mortgage goes down every month because my renter goes and works their butt off every single month. And the first bill they pay is that rent that goes and pays down the loan that I have on that property. Uh, the spread in between the two is my cash flow. So I keep that extra three, four, five hundred bucks a month and put it into my bank account every single month. But then I also get added benefits like tax uh, benefits. There's countless tax benefits from investing in real estate. Uh, and then lastly, what's really cool, a lot of people don't understand when you do this strategy, you actually grab 20% equity every time you buy one of these houses. So I helped somebody who had a little retirement account go out and spend their retirement account buying some houses, doing this strategy. It's not a strategy I typically recommend, but my first thing was like, all right, let's get rid of this money you have to get you out of this mindset. Like, let's go blow it buying real estate because I got to <laughs> get you in the broke mindset of I don't have money to learn how to really leverage other people's money. But the first thing that they did when they did that is doubled that savings account because they were putting 20% down every house they bought. And so they were getting 20% equity and putting 20% down. So they had 40% equity. But even if you don't put any of your own money down, you gain 20% equity every time you buy a house. That's one of the fastest ways. I would imagine that a lot of your audience probably doesn't even have a net worth yet, right? Mm -hmm. Like they probably have more debt than they do assets. And the quickest way to get a positive net worth is go start buying assets where you're gaining equity every time you buy one of those houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a, I have a hard question here. Can you, and yes. you're, you're, you're very experienced. So I'm going to throw it at you. All so right. if you buy an 80 cent deal and then you, you have to pay because you're you're doing it with other people's money and then yep. there's points and in interest. Cause that's, I assume you're talking about a, like a private money loan or something like yep. that. Right. Right. So then you go to refinance it. Part of, part of what I've seen people running into is that they have to pay like the money uh, that, that is the points and in interest they have to pay um, means that there's not 20% equity when they go to refinance. And so they have to bring money to closing. So how do you, how do you recommend people avoid that? Yeah, I love it. So before I answer the question, and, and, and I'm hoping that, that this is really hard to follow. I'm a whiteboard person, right? Like I'm yeah. a visual person. <laughs> so I can't learn very well without a whiteboard, but bear with me because I don't have a whiteboard to show you. But here, here's, before I answer the question, I'm going to tell you something really exciting. So okay. the, the most exciting part is we definitely have an answer for that. And what you will start to learn when it comes to investing in real estate is there's always an answer 
to your problem. There's always an answer to your problem. There's countless people who have spent countless days and hours and nights and years solving these exact problems as they arise. And so it's exciting to when you start to learn, like if you're out there and you're just wanting to learn about real estate investing, or you're like interested of like, is real estate investing for me or not? I want you to really pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Specialized knowledge, i.e. that information is literally the answer to all of the problems that you think is holding you back, right? And so as you get started, you, you have all of these doubts, we call them limiting beliefs, that you believe you need a wad of cash, or you believe mm -hmm. you need perfect credit, or you believe you need experience in construction. There's all these doubts that you have, when the reality is you don't need any of those. You just need somebody who understands the specialized knowledge that will guide you through the process. Uh, wink, wink. I, I hear mom does a pretty good job of that. I, I hear the <laughs> Investors Network does a really good job of that. Uh, but, but that's the reality. And so I want to share that with you because a lot of times I will sit here and answer question after question, but then people think, oh, but they didn't answer this one problem. And so I can't do it. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what your problem is. There's always a solution to it. It may not always be the answer you want, but there's always an answer to the problem that you believe is holding you back. So the answer to that question, Andrea, of all right, if I if I have to borrow the money from somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're we're just naturally assuming that you're borrowing that money from somebody else. You can also borrow that money from yourself, right? And the cool thing is, if you borrow the money from yourself, then you don't have to pay any interest. So all you have to do is have that that say that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You can use that same money over and over and over and over again to do this strategy over and over. So you buy the house, renovate it, rent it out, refinance it, and when you refinance it, you get all your money back. And then go take your money and do it again, right? So I only need one set of two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go buy ten houses at two hundred fifty thousand. Because when I refinance it, I get all my money back, and I can do it again over and over and over again. But the reality is, the way we like to do this is in scale, right? I don't want to be mm -hmm. told I can only do one at a time. I want to go right. do five at a time. So if you're wanting to do more than one at a time, then yeah, you need to borrow that money from somebody else. Well, when you borrow it from somebody else, there's going to be interest that you have to pay. So like you said, when you go to pay it off, you're not only going to owe that 80%, but you're going to go owe that 80% plus interest. So at this mm -hmm. point, you have two options. One, just go ahead and pay that interest off, right? So if it's if it's a, a couple of points and you have it for three or four months while you're renovating it to get it rent ready real quick, then you're going to be looking at paying five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in interest, mm -hmm. which is really not bad. I'll pay five, ten thousand right. $10,000 every time I buy a rental house. But there's those people that are like, hang on, you said 100% of other people's money, right? Like, I don't right. want to use any of my own money. And so when you get into that mindset of like, okay, I don't want to do any of my own money, then this is what I always have to ask first. Are you willing to do any of your own work? And mm -hmm. if you're not willing to use any of your own money and you're not willing to do any of your, uh, of your own work, then it's not going to work, right? Right. We in American economics, we have to either have money or time, right? We, mm -hmm. we can either use money to make money or we can use specialized knowledge and time to make money. And so if that is you and you say, look, I don't even want to put five or 10 grand down to buy a rental property, then we encourage you to go do that first step, right? So the first right. step of wholesaling, you go straight to the homeowner, you're buying it now for 70 cents on the dollar. And instead of going and selling it to me and marking it up 10%, you now go borrow that same loan. And when you refinance it for 80%, now not only do you have enough to cover that interest that you were talking about, but you actually oftentimes get money back at close. Right. Now you get paid to buy rental properties. Uh, but in that instance, you've got to be willing to do a little bit of the work, meaning you've got to go out and get that property under contract directly from the homeowner. And you're not, you're cutting out the middleman, right? You're, you're not paying that middleman. I like the middleman because I have gotten to a point to where I have more money than I do time. So right. I would rather have that middleman go do all the work for me. But starting out, remember, I was broke. So I had to do both. I went to go find the property directly myself. Then when I went and refinanced it and I got to pay everybody back and even take a little bit of money home, that is whenever it got really, really exciting and fun. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be light bulbs going on over people's heads across the nation because you just nailed it. Like, that's exactly, it. exactly what we needed to hear. I love it. Good, good. 
Woo. I love it. I love it. And just really quickly, you keep talking about borrowing money from other people. And I just think that we need to talk just a second about hard money lending and private money lending so that people understand how, who are these people that just give, that, that will loan me money? Yes. Great, great, great topic. It's one of my favorite topics. You'll hear me say that about every topic in real estate. It's my it's favorite like strategy. Estate. That's right. Um, no. So when we say borrowing uh, uh, you know, private money or hard money loans, the cool thing about business and, and the way real estate works and business works here, especially in the US, everybody is always looking to find a way to make money with their money. And so once you've saved up your IRA or your 401k or your retirement, or uh, maybe you've you received a, a, a check from like a, a, a life insurance policy or wh whatever it is, an inheritance, mm -hmm. whatever it is, when you have that money, most of us are smart enough to not just run out and spend it all, right? It's like, but what do I do with the money? Well, you typically invest it in some time of a, a, a retirement account. The average retirement account is paying you about four and a half percent, right? And that's over the long run because some people are like, hang on, I'm earning 7%. Well, that's cool. Just wait. <laughs> it's going to yeah. change it's probably in the very, very near future, by the way. Uh, but if you average it out over, over 30 years, you're going to earn about four and a half to five percent on the high end. And so that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way the average person does it. In real estate, once we get specialized knowledge, we realize well, I would rather lend my money to somebody to go buy a property, which is a brick and mortar asset backed by an insurance policy. So we lend money to people to go buy that real estate. And in return, they're paying me double digit interest rates, right? So they're paying me like 10 to 12% interest on my money. I can, I can grow my money a whole lot faster at 10 to 12% than I can at four and a half, five percent and I'm not dependent on the economy. I'm not dependent mm -hmm. on the stock market. I'm not dependent on a particular company and whether they go bankrupt because a, a house can't go bankrupt, right? It can lose value temporarily, but the good news is, is the house is paid off. And in the long run, historically speaking, 99.99999% of the time, when the value goes down, it will come back up, right? We can't right. say that about the stock market. And so just by lending my money and earning those 10 to 12% interest, uh, I'm able to make a really good return. Well, spin that around. If you're looking to get started, you would be borrowing from somebody like us now that turns around and has found such success in real estate that now we're not only borrowing money, but we're now lending the money that we've made from all of the deals that we've done fr from borrowing the money. And so the cool thing is, um, there is over, I'm going to throw a, I'm going to throw a number out here. Okay. And it's going to blow everybody's mind. There's over $30 trillion sitting in retirement accounts right now. $30 trillion sitting in retirement accounts right now. So trust me, if you're listening to this, you know, somebody that yeah. has some money in their retirement account. And the cool thing is you don't have to go ask them, right? Just go to your local RIA or meetup or, 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 or real estate network, and you will find countless people there that want you to borrow money from them. And so this will really help, I believe, your audience to, to, to this is something I love to teach our students. And that is make sure that you're not positioning this in the sense of we're used to we're used to asking for things. Okay. So the number one thing you have to shift your mind to is you're not borrowing. You're not asking to borrow money as if you're asking your rich uncle for a, a, a few thousand dollars to pay off some debts, right? That's yep. borrowing. That's asking. This is actually presenting an opportunity. This is going to somebody saying, Hey, I, I know you may not you know, I know you're probably aware that you, your money is earning you four or five percent and we're going into this volatile market that anything could happen. Would you would you like the opportunity to earn 10 to 12 percent on your money? And by the way, it's going to be backed by a hard asset, a brick and mortar property with insurance. So even if it were to burn down, you were to get you would still get paid back in whole. That is all of a sudden the light bulb moment where you realize wait, I'm not even having to borrow money and go ask for money. I'm actually getting to bring an opportunity to my family and friends or the local person that I meet at a local real estate event. I'm actually getting to bring an opportunity to them to create a win-win situation. Yes. Wow.
Love Y'all, it. Love this it. was this was the number one reason that I joined the Women's Real Estate Investors Network because I you you all share so much value in the masterclass, the Without Fear of Her Future masterclass, and I know we've got one coming up. So if anybody listening is looking for specialized knowledge, you know where to find it. We'll put that in the show notes. But for me, as I was going through the masterclass, I was like, I get it, I get it. I'm so excited. I don't have friends with piles of money. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Where do I find my people? And so that was literally why I joined the network and the mentorship, I knew I would get specialized knowledge, but I also knew I would be surrounded by people that were looking for opportunities that I could present them. So love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'll tell you this, the, the first person I ever borrowed money from is still lending me money to this day. <laughs> it, it doesn't <laughs> take long to, for somebody to help you earn 10 to 12% interest for you to become friends really quickly. And yeah. so once, once people start to realize that concept, uh, you know, it, 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 it's downhill from there. I love it. My I, mean, first, I just want to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say my first lender from the network. We're now partners and are doing a really big project. So it's like when you're absolutely right, you build great relationships and it's there's no no end to what you can do together. Yeah, And, and you're I making each so other vital. a whole lot of money. Yeah, exactly. I think it's so vital for people to realize that like you're not asking for something. You're yeah. presenting an opportunity to somebody because I'm not a asker. Like I, I would rather just be poor than ask somebody for help. That's my, <laughs> that's my personality. And so I was, I remember at first I was like, Oh, I like all of this and it's cool, but like, I don't want to go ask anybody for money. And that's actually the reason I joined a network first as well is because when you join a network, it takes the asking part out because they already know that yeah. they're looking for you. And so now it was a whole lot easier. Well, then one day somebody presented it to me and explained that it's not an ask, it's an offer. And it was a light bulb for me. I was like, oh, I can offer everybody opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> so now I offer everybody opportunities. <laughs> I don't ask anybody for money. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. There's one other thing that we've been talking about that I know that our listeners are like, okay, uh, it's all great. You're talking about buying these properties at 70% or 80%, but they're looking at the market and they're like, how are they finding these deals at that, at the, at, at 70 or 80%? So can you take a second to let people know how, how are we doing this? Absolutely. And this is probably another one of the biggest uh, limiting beliefs that holds people back because what happens is we watch the HGTV, right? Which I'm guilty right. of, right? I watched it for years before I got started investing in real estate. Um, and we watch the TV shows and then we go out there and we look, you know, we have no specialized knowledge. So we go and we call realtors, which we love realtors. Like we couldn't do our business without realtors, but there's such a huge difference in what realtors do versus what we do. And the way I like to explain that is realtors serve 90% of homeowners. Okay, so 90% of homeowners are served best by realtors because what realtors do, it's actually by definition a live auction, right? You're listing a home on the MLS and you're taking the highest bid for it, right? So right. What, what that means is realtors sell houses for full price because the definition of what something's worth is what somebody's willing to pay you for it. And so right. realtors serve 90% of the community. 90% of the community is looking to sell their house for full price. And so if you're looking to sell your house for full price, you definitely, definitely want to call a realtor, all right? And that's why we have tons of realtors inside our network that are so successful because now they're not only making money as a realtor, but they're making money as an investor also because now they get to serve 100% of the community. But for us as real estate investors, we are not looking to serve the 90 percenters, right? Those people that have steady jobs, steady income, they've been taking care of their house, those people are best served by realtors. We serve the other 10%, okay? The other 10% are what we often refer to as motivated or distressed sellers, okay? This is somebody who has a house that doesn't have everything cleaned up, perfect, beautiful, ready to list it on the MLS and time and money to sit back and wait to get it uh, for someone to buy it and go through an inspection and make all the necessary repairs. There's a lot of work that goes into selling a home and we don't realize it because for most people, and I hate this statistic, but it's sadly true. For most people, your home is your number one asset. Right. So for you going and replacing a hot water heater when the inspector comes back and says yours is bad, you don't think anything of it because you're going to do it whether you would sell the house or not. But when you start looking at somebody who just simply doesn't have the money to pay their rent and is behind on their rent, 
Now all of a sudden, inspector says they have to replace the hot water heater. And they're like, well, I didn't even have the money to pay the rent. I definitely can't replace the hot water heater. And now the lender pulls out at the last minute because the home's not loanable. All of a sudden, who's there to serve them? The realtor, all they know to do is to go back and try to sell it to someone else that's going to use the exact same type of financing and the deal's not going to get done. And as that happens, the seller gets more and more motivated, more and more distressed and behind on their payments. And that's where people like us come in and we're able to buy those houses all cash, close really quickly, as is no requirement for, for having the home to be in loanable condition, no long waiting period. And that's, that's all the difference when you start to realize that, look, we're not competing with realtors and houses that are selling above asking. We're working with people that might be like in a foreclosure situation, or maybe they've gone through a divorce and they went from where there was two incomes paying the mortgage. Now, one person on one income is stuck paying the whole mortgage and they didn't plan in advance. So all of a sudden they don't have the luxury of, of listing it, especially in the market we're going into now, of listing it on the market and waiting 30, 60, 90, 120 days to find a buyer and then go through that whole process and hope that it works out. So they're looking to just sell it directly to us. And by the way, you're saving those realtor fees right out the gate. So 6% is actually a win-win. It saves the homeowner 6%. You don't have to pay the 6%. So we're already down to 94%, right? Now that difference in that last four, 24 to 14% is the difference in what something's worth when you're selling it quickly in a distressed situation, i.e., you know, we buy gold. You see it all over town. Look, if you have a nice, beautiful Rolex or necklace, I don't recommend taking it to the We Buy Gold store to get the most amount of money from it. This is the exact same concept. Yeah. And so what we do is create win-wins. For these people that are in a distressed or motivated situation, maybe like you just said, foreclosure, or they've inherited a property that they don't have the money or the time to do anything with it, but they have to pay the mortgage and the taxes and they just need to get out from under it. So we're creating win-wins with them. We're just buying it as is. We're putting some cash in their pocket and helping them move on to the next part of their life yet we are acquiring these properties at a really good price. And so there's tons of them out there because the truth is that there's a ton of people all across the nation. It doesn't matter what city you live in, how small or large, there's people with problems in your area. So, yeah. um, so another, the, another way I like to say that is if you're listening right now, raise your hand. We, we're not going <laughs> to see you, but raise your hand. If you know a realtor, right? I'll wait for everybody to raise their hand. Every person knows a realtor. Now, raise your hand if you know a successful real estate investor, right? Obviously, the three of us are going to raise our hand, but I would imagine the vast majority of your audience isn't, right? Unless they've already met y'all a long time ago and, and learned from you all. So that helps to put it into perspective. We're only serving the 10%. But think of how many realtors there are serving the other 90% yeah. and think of how few investors there are serving that 10% that need to sell quickly for cash. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, you know what? we didn't talk about uh, that, that, that I would just mention really quickly is seller financing. And it's yes. the same concept. A lot of people don't realize well, why would a seller seller finance the home to me? It's the exact same reason. Oftentimes they're in a financial situation where it makes more sense to just sell the home to you and keep the original loan in place versus you having to pay and go get a whole new loan. All of a sudden we're able to give them more money. So now they're motivated and distressed, but they still get to sell their house for closer to retail, right? Because maybe they're upside down or maybe... Maybe they're just a little bit behind on their payments, but th they're okay with you letting you take over those payments on the house. And that's an exciting, exciting strategy, especially going in to the economy that we're looking into in the future right now. There's never been a better time to look into learning about seller financing, subject to wraparound mortgages. These are unique strategies that that, that I know, uh, you know we, we teach and y'all teach because there, there's so many people that are in these situations that actually will just simply let you take over the, the, the existing financing and allow you to buy these houses without even ever going and getting a loan.
Mm -hmm. So here's a question that I get all the time on coaching calls. And so I know this is what everybody's waiting for because they're sitting at home thinking this. How can people who are in an expensive market get started in real estate investing if they don't have the money for a big old down payment? Because a private yep. money lender may not may not be willing to lend on a million dollar property, right? So how do they how do they go that how do they get started? Yeah, so there's two answers, right? So one, mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't we don't think this through all the way, but the reality is if you're in a market where the houses are more expensive, mm -hmm. you, you have to understand that that means that the average income in your market is more. So like, for instance, if you're in Texas and the, the, you know, you're looking at an average home price of 350 to $450,000, well, it's not going to be that unlikely to find somebody that has 350 to $450,000 in an IRA and a 401k that wants to lend the money to buy that house. But if you're in California and the average house is 1 million to 1.5 million, it's also equally as likely to find somebody in Santa Barbara that's got $1.5 million in an IRA and 401k. And so really it tends to be in line with, it doesn't really matter where you live versus if you live in you know a small little town in, in Detroit or Alabama where you can buy a house for $90,000. Well, yeah, but it might be more common to find someone that only has $90,000 in their IRA. So definitely don't get remember $30 trillion in the US sitting in retirement accounts. So never make the assumption that there's not somebody out there that would like to make their money go to work for them. I've actually never personally ran into the problem of that, but that's also because I join networks. And whenever I'm in a private network, it allows me to be able to always have access to that kind of money. Mm -hmm. But the other answer to that is if it's like, you know what, okay, maybe I can find someone that will lend it to me, but they want me to put a down payment and, and some monthly interest payments, and I don't even have the money for that. I highly recommend partnering on your first deal. I actually recommend partnering on your first five deals, right? I partnered on all of my first deals. To this day, I still partner on a good majority of my deals. If not the vast majority of, of, of all of our deals we do, we still partner on. Um, partnering is one of the absolute best ways to create a win-win situation because we talked about it earlier. You've got a certain subset of people that have time and a certain subset of people that have money. If we can put the two of those together, right? I.e., you may have to go out and spend a little bit more of your time and energy finding the deal that, and, and flipping the house or whatever it is that you're looking to do with it, but then go partner with somebody who's got a little bit more money but doesn't want to spend any of their time. Right. And so mm -hmm. by partnering, you can create that win win situation. Plus, you get to learn from the other partner, which is so priceless. Usually in real estate, we're partnering up with somebody in a private network. And now we're partnering with somebody who's already got a little bit of experience and they lend me their experience. And I get to learn the easy way instead of the hard way. Mm, awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, I just want to, you know, mention that. First of all, all these things, I know we're just throwing a lot of this specialized knowledge at you, but yes. if you join a masterclass, we can fill in all the gaps. Obviously, mm -hmm. we don't have time. It's a seven-day masterclass versus, you know, this this little um, podcast here. So we can give you all those other answers in a masterclass. But um, I just wanted to say how exciting, Kelton, I know that you, your brother started out. I think your very first deal was a wholesale and now you've, you know, gone on to do all the things. And then I, you know, when y'all began to teach me, my first deal was a wholesale and then flipping and then, you know, but then I'll never forget. And I did that for several years before I actually lent. Then I, then I was the lender. I was always the borrower and then to be, and, and so exciting and so fun. But then I also remember the first time that I was the lender and how exciting that is when you get to that side of it. Um, so I just want to, again, make sure that every woman on here knows you don't have to have that pile of money. You can start out just the way that pretty much all three of us started out mm -hmm. with yep. uh, very little money doing the, you know, the wholesaling and, and, and borrowing. And, and now, well, we're still borrowing, but we're also lending. And so it's for everyone, no matter where you are financially, you can be a real estate investor. I love it. I love it. Well, Kelton, you know, um, if you've listened to the podcast, everybody knows we ask our guests for three takeaways. So Kelton, what are the three things you would advise an investor or entrepreneur who is looking to be brave and grow or is perhaps feeling stuck where they are? Absolutely. So first and foremost, I can tell you 
uh, whatever it is that you believe is holding you back, whatever it is that you believe is preventing you from going and being a, spe a, a, a real estate investor, I promise you that the answer is specialized knowledge. So what I encourage every single person that's listening to this right now to do is get out a pen and paper, maybe do it when you get home or don't wait and do it right now mm -hmm. and pull out your, your phone or your notes or, or, or maybe text somebody or pull out a pen and paper and write down what is it that you believe is holding you back from getting started? Because the most important thing that you can do is identify what those limiting beliefs are. Once you've identified them, you now can say, okay, I thought it was money, but after listening to this 50 minute podcast, I realized money's not holding me back, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you don't have something else that you think is holding you back. So I'm telling you right now, what's holding you back is your limiting beliefs. And so if you can write down what you think is preventing you from being a successful real estate investor, you've literally wrote down on the paper what your limiting beliefs are. Once you've identified them, it's so easy to destroy them. So you've got to crush those limiting beliefs that you think are holding you back. That is that is my first and, and, and foremost, probably most important nugget that I can ever share with you. Um, secondly, I would tell you that real estate investing, it does not take money to be a successful real estate investor, but it takes specialized knowledge, right? So, so many of us think that it takes money to be a successful real estate investor. The reality is it's not money, it's specialized knowledge. So that's the that's the second one that I'll share with you. And then the third nugget is probably very different than what you're used to hearing. Uh, but it is that I encourage every single one of you that's listening to this to feel free to dream big and to be brave. Like that, that I mean, how many times do they hear that y'all say that, right? <laughs> dream big and be brave. But I feel like so many people put their self in a box to where they feel like when you say that it goes right past them and you're speaking to somebody else. When the reality is that is for every person listening to this, every one of you deserve to dream big and to be brave. And that is truly the difference between going out and becoming successful. And so if you start to realize that I guarantee you, everybody watching this has a bigger passion, has a bigger why. Look, real estate is just the vehicle. That's it. That's just the vehicle to achieve what it is that we really want to achieve in life. But ultimately, if you have a desire to serve others, if you have a desire to help others, if you have a desire to help your family, if you have a desire to, to provide nice things for you and your family to be able to, to go on a vacation or spend quality time together, don't feel bad about that. Like, don't feel like you're not deserving of those things because you are. And not only you, but your family also deserves those things. So just please, please, please give yourself the permission to dream big and to be brave. I love it. Well, thank you, Kelton. Thanks for dropping nuggets of wisdom for, for all of us today. Um, and for being the second man to, to be on the I was gonna, fear of her future podcast. I was going to say thank you first and foremost for having me. I appreciate y'all letting, letting me slip in and share some specialized knowledge. And I think it's, it's so important because I've learned from so many people that I do align with, but I've also learned from so many people that that maybe I don't have the exact same beliefs, right? Uh, of or maybe looks a little different than I do, or or, or uh, came from a different background than I do. But I think it's important to try to just learn from everybody that you can. So thank you all uh, to y'all and your audience for allowing me to to share with you. Absolutely. Well, on behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Andrea Ingstrom, encouraging you to be brave and dream big.